Last issue we talked about the hero tearing down the door as usual, but this time he has broken down the door of the Seven Devil's Teeth's lair. Will the hero be able to keep his gold against the Seven Devil's Teeth? Let's get started on this exciting episode. Facing the calm and collected man Abel recognized the identity of the male lead at once. The man in front of him is the rumored freshman who got the gold coin in the first year. Originally they were going to grab the gold coins from the other dorms. This male lead who was not sent to the door for nothing made them lazy to go to others. Though the male lead suddenly appeared. But they didn't make a move either. Abel on the other hand asked the male lead to hand it over of his own accord. Of course the male lead was not a lamb to the slaughter. Naturally he refused without hesitation. The next second a doll with tugging strings attacked towards the male lead. While the male lead dodged the attack he showed them the power of his muscles. With the thread snapping the doll incapacitated immediately changed back into sure ball. Faced with this situation the hero says to Abel. You really are too weak. He taunts his opponent that he needs to continue practicing his strength for two more years. Without waiting for the male lead to be happy for a while another pair of doll's big hands appeared under his feet. It grabbed the male lead's feet and took control of him. The male lead seemed to realize that the power of this doll was even stronger than the one from earlier. But he could only watch as the doll pulled out gold coins from its pocket and threw them to Abel. Then the doll directly threw him out like trash. But this level of attack was simply not enough for the male lead to fear. Just as the male lead was about to settle the score with his opponent he accidentally stepped on Sherbal. He didn't want to accidentally step on someone. So he was going to take Sherbal back to the infirmary for treatment. This surprised Abel a bit. He asked the hero if he wanted to give up the gold coin. However the male lead's answer was unexpected. He said that there are always priorities after all. Before leaving look he didn't forget to tell Abel. No matter how strong you are he will not give up. When this statement came out the crowd known as Seven Mother's Teeth was a bit shocked. They all looked at the male lead. But it was clear that they really couldn't see what the male lead was up to. But after the male lead left Abel had a strange feeling. I don't know when but the gold coins in his hand turned into buttons for the doll. However the pink haired girl witnessed what just happened. Just at the moment when the doll bounced off the gold coin. The hero actually used his mouth to bite off a button from the doll's clothes. He then spat it out with a speed that was unfathomable to the naked eye. Then at the moment of popping off the kill the hero showed his sky high lung capacity. He sucked up the gold coin just like that. After hearing Pink Hair's incredible explanation Abel also felt that things were getting interesting. After the hero took Sherbal back to the infirmary he finally woke up. He was questioning how he was able to turn back into a human when suddenly a strange sound came from him. It turns out to be the hero doing his daily training. After seeing him awake the male lead didn't want to stay any longer. With that he said for him to get some rest. Sherbal saw the male lead leave and recalled what he had just said. He couldn't help but get lost in thought. On the other hand Dot and Lance were arguing in the male lead's dormitory. Because Dot was jealous of Lance's handsomeness and was planning to use magic to compete. Finn also had a headache seeing these two people besides also this was his dormitory. However at that moment the male lead demolished another door. Seeing the scene in front of him he suggested that it would be best for them to go out and fight without destroying anything in the room. But he does this himself no less. It turns out that Dot didn't mean any harm. He just came over to give the hero a little token of his appreciation. Finn hadn't expected this either. If you don't look at his words actions and attitude Dot is still quite educated. Suddenly Ramon rushed over. She brought a few people to the Libra. Here the number of gold coins in each dormitory would be displayed. Right now Ryan's dormitory possessed almost all of the gold coins. In short if this continues the consequences will be unimaginable. This statement undoubtedly made the three men ignite their fighting spirit. But just as the hero was replenishing his energy he was sent to clean the owl's hut. Because it was the principal's punishment for the hero's assault on a teacher. To this the hero was a bit helpless. However although Lance came over to help he was more worried that someone would come and take the male lead's gold coins. As expected just as they were still talking inside two of Ryan's men had quietly arrived. And at this time the male lead was being annoyed by the owl. But the next second a water magic appeared at his feet. Just as the hero was struggling desperately the other party finally showed up. It turns out that the opponents are the bald heads old six and old seven from the seven mother's teeth. Then old six said that he wanted to do it with the two with a gold coin as a bet. The hero was about to drown at this point. Seeing this old six directly used magic and turned himself into a deep sea raging shark. The shark immediately jumped into the water to fight the male lead. The only one left now was Old Seven who was Lance's opponent. Then he threw the huge sword directly from his hand. When Lance dodged it he tried to use gravity magic. But he never thought that the owl would appear at Old Seven's feet. He tried to ignore the owl. But when he thought of his sister Lance had to stop his attack. Seeing Lance's action Old Seven became more and more arrogant. He threw two hand swords directly. In order to avoid the cute owl behind him getting hurt Lance had to take the blow with his body. Seeing Lance so wicked is worthy of a super famous family in the magic world. I didn't realize that old Seven knew how to use verbal attacks. He was mocking Lance with his words. Lance did not respond but used his magic to move the shovel behind old Seven. This time old Seven was no longer patient. He directly threw out three hand swords. But after seeing Lance's nonchalance he was a bit shocked. When he looked back he realized that his opponent's move was trying to gather the owls together. This time Lance could finally show his strength without any reservation. Seeing this situation old Seven decisively used the best technique he had learned in his life. 
He throws out the oversized shuriken that he is so proud of. However handsome only two and a half seconds. A gravity magic directly crushed him. He didn't realize that both men had two marks. Why are their strengths so different? Then Lance also told the reason. The guy who fights for himself like Old Seven is not worthy to be compared to the guy who fights for his sister. On the other hand Old Six was still proud that this person couldn't escape the water magic he created. However in the next second the male lead was so fast that he couldn't catch up. Even though he started his transformation mode he was still no match for the male lead. And so the two finally won the duel. The male lead also won a gold coin. They didn't realize that Old Six and Old Seven were this strong. If that was the case maybe they could have won the Seven Mother's Teeth. Just when they were full of confidence a man wearing a mask suddenly appeared behind them. In a flash the masked man came inside with speed comparable to lightning. Just as they were shocked Lance subconsciously tried to use gravity magic. But he was surprised to find that the magic didn't work well. However the hero tossed his jacket aside and assumed a running pose. The masked man had wanted to calm his opponent down, but the killing intent leaking from his body was not convincing at all. Seeing that the hero's fist was about to hit him, but in the next second the masked man actually easily dodged. Turns out the masked man was here to recover the two. As for the murderous aura he exposed just now, he was trying to test the strength of the male lead. But at the same time he also came to confirm his own strength. However after the masked man left his mask suddenly cracked. It turns out that the male lead's attack just now still hurt him. On this day a puppet virus suddenly appeared in the academy. Anyone who touches it turns into a puppet, and the virus infects quickly. In just one day the school's infirmary was already full of people. Lance guesses that these are the work of seven mothers. So the group decided to investigate while the night was dark and windy and robbed them of their gold coins in the process. However before making their move they saw Ramon shaking in the hallway. But there was something odd about his movements. Looking at Ramon's charming back dot immediately transformed into a little fan. Just when he wanted to go up and say hello Lance stopped him. Because he realized that something had gone wrong. The next second Ramon made a pose like a puppet under their eyes. Her hands and feet kept shaking. When she looked back her face turned into a horrible puppeteer. Fortunately everyone reacted fast enough to hide. Raymond looked a little scary. However Dottie was too engrossed to stop herself. But this was not the time to think about such things. Just because Ramon had gone further and further away. Everyone rushed after him. The people didn't find it but they realized that it ended up being a dead end. But just then Finn heard a strange knocking sound. It was the sound of wood rubbing against each other. But Dot thought that Finn had a problem with his ears. However the next moment he seemed to hear the sound as well. Only the calm Lance saw the clues. In his analysis it seemed that all means were just magic so he used magic to crack it. In the next second a gate floated out of the ground. Possibly the method of cracking the gate was already Lance's limit. As for getting the gate to open it was up to the others. Obviously this was Dot's chance to perform. He used his flame shot magic. After a burst of smoke the gate still didn't move. Just when the crowd didn't know what to do the man of the house moved a humanoid armor from nearby. He threw it at the door. Then he threw a strong punch with his fist. The door suddenly opened a thin crack. Then he shoved his long sword into the doorway. Then he stomped on it as hard as he could. Finn and Dot looked at the big hole in their heads and bluntly said that the hero was a pervert. However the hero faced their expressions of surprise. With the door pried open they followed the path to the basement. What came into view was a huge arena. Then with the appearance of green flame magic a handsome boy appeared. The boy they thought the other was one of the seven mothers. But he was just a minion who was placed here to stop the crowd. But even so he was more than enough to deal with the male lead and the others. Of course his purpose was clear. They wanted to get through here unless they fought to the death betting on gold coins. To the belligerent Lance it couldn't be better. However Dot came out to interrupt again. Turns out he hates the man who is more arrogant than himself. He said that he would just leave such trivial matters to himself. In his mind all handsome people are guilty. And after inquiring this handsome man not only had a fan club but was even popular in the academy. The other party saw Dort in the state and thought that it was impossible for him to win over himself as well. So he immediately used thorn like plant magic. Dot could only attack with flame magic. But he didn't expect the attack to have any effect at all. And at the same time he was almost stabbed by the thorns. Dotter was clearly able to defeat Senior Shabal before. But now he was acting so uncontested. So he began to mock Dot with his words. When the man stated that he was two and a half times stronger than Sybil Senpai Dot immediately came to attention. He decisively launched countless balls of flame at his opponent. However this time instead of attacking the man he marked his side. At the same time he said that it was a trap that triggered magic with two, five times the power of his normal attack. At this the man only thought he was bluffing. He said that as long as he didn't move he wouldn't trigger the trap. But as soon as that statement came out Dot thought otherwise. This move was a trick he had learned all his life and it was 100 sure to hit. So the man stood his ground and took the lead in the attack. Dotter saw this and immediately unleashed a ball of flame. But such a normal attack doesn't work at all. The opponent decisively wrapped his thorns around him. Watching Dot couldn't bring himself to step on the signs he felt he had won. Then he maneuvered the thorns plan to bring Dot down hard ready to end the fight. However at the crucial moment Dot suddenly smiles. The next second there was a violent explosion at the scene. This maneuver left handsome dumbfounded. It turned out that what he had marked was not a trigger bomb but a time bomb. Then he gave his opponent an oversized bomb. With the explosion Dot wins the battle.
However, what was never expected was, the man remained in an elegant and handsome pose after being defeated. This made Dadi admire her opponent's level of dedication. Just when they thought they could move on to the next step, puddles of mud appeared underneath each man's feet. Dot was very flustered while the hero was protecting his beloved Puff. Lance looks calm. Only Finn, who is afraid for his life, keeps hugging his thighs. With such a quagmire here, it must be the other side trying to separate them. Then they can carry out their aim of defeating them one by one. Just as Lance was thinking more, the glasses man who ranked third among the seven mothers appeared. On the other hand, Dot and Finn have come to another place. They meet Cutie who is ranked fifth among the seven mothers and Straw Hat Boy who is ranked fourth. Meanwhile, the hero has landed safely. Just as he was wondering how he ended up here, the lights nearby instantly lit up. Then the masked man also appeared gracefully. He was ranked second out of the seven devil's teeth. Since the last time he saw the male lead's moves, he very much concluded that the male lead and him were in the same category. That is, both can't use magic and both are denied by the world. To this, the male lead acted just like a dummy saying that there was no such thing. However, they were able to come to this academy each in their own different situation. And his special ability is his eyes. As long as they are seen by him, they will be unable to use magic for a while. Plus his magic that strengthens his speed and his exquisite sword chi. This is completely the nemesis of mages. What he didn't expect was that he was meeting the oddball of a male lead today. For the male lead who had no magic the demon's eye was completely unaffected by him. But even so the masked man still stabbed his sword into the male lead's abdomen with his super speed. But he didn't know that this was a break that the hero had intentionally revealed. Almost at the same time the masked man's mask was shattered by the hero's blow. The demon's eyes that he saw the male lead thought that he had congested his eyes. So he hurriedly apologized to him. The masked man was very surprised that the hero didn't know about the eye. His eyes were called the devil's eyes. Growing up the others were in awe of his eyes. Even his parents disliked his eye. It kept him in a small room every day. Even the food he ate was leftovers that no one wanted. The worst part is that his parents actually tried to kill him too. That's why he thinks that he's just like the hero who can't do magic. They are both denied by the world. And the masked man defiantly cast the vector second order magic. A barrier like an arrow had immediately appeared around the male lead. In this barrier he could speed himself up infinitely, and the enemy's speed would be reduced. Just as he stopped letting go and was about to make his final powerful strike the hero also launched a counterattack. Only to see the hero control his muscles and swing a punch straight at the ground. Taking advantage of the moment when the ground was broken the hero rushed straight to the masked man's body. After that the hero showed him the power of muscle magic. After being defeated the masked man also recognized the hero's strength. He recalled that both he and the hero were abandoned by their parents. He kindly reminds the male lead that he can't go any further. Because Abel the boss of the seven mother's teeth is not something he can deal with right now. Even if he defeats himself, and he still has power left in him now. But that's still not enough. But the hero simply won't listen. Because he has reasons why he must defeat the boss. Again the hero won't change his mind. No matter how much the world rejects his demonic eyes. No matter how much the world rejects his demonic eyes or how much he's been badmouthed by others. He wants to be friends with the masked man. Because that's what his old man taught him growing up. And the hero managed to impress the masked man with his words. At the same time the battle between Lance and Lao San was officially started. Only to see Lance a gravity magic crush the old three into mud. But the next second Lao San appeared behind Lance. And he created several doppelgangers with mud magic. And that was old three's ability. And several doppelgangers rushed towards Lance together. Lance once again used magic to crush them into mud. Lance also realized that this was not enough. If he wanted to defeat Lao San then he had to find his real body. After dodging Lao San's attack Lance used gravity magic again. However Old Three had already shifted behind him by now. While Lance hadn't reacted he directly trapped Lance with a binding magic. After that he kept slamming magic balls at Lance. After giving Lance a hard time Lao San also took pity on Lance. He stated that he obviously had a good origin but he went with those trash. And he thought of pulling Lance into joining the Seven Mother's Teeth. After all with his ability he was perfectly capable. If Lance continues to hang out with that bunch of trash. Sooner or later he will become a trash too. After all the Seven Mothers have the Academy's finest education and top-notch magical props. This way Lance's talents were utilized to the limit. Lance was very dismissive of this. Because a truly strong person never complains about this. Because being strong inside is really strong. When he finished speaking he directly slammed Lao San into the side wall with a horizontal gravity magic. But unfortunately this attack still didn't cause any damage to Old Three. It turned out that Old Three had long ago laid down mud around him to act as a buffer in order to deal with Lance. After all gravity magic had to hit the enemy directly in order to cause damage. However before Lao San could be happy for two. Five seconds a pile of rubble suddenly smashed towards him. This was exactly what Lance had just smashed out with his gravity magic. And Lao San didn't dare to stay any longer and directly rushed out. Seeing that Lance had recognized his magic old three no longer disguised himself. Only to see old three explode with powerful magic. He directly used his strongest magic. The pile of mud continuously emerging from the ground a huge goat-headed demon appeared in front of Lance. This was precisely the second rank advanced magic that Lao San was proud of. It was important to realize that this level of magic was rarely used even by magicians of both lines. 
Generally, it's the valuable people who know this magic. It turned out that he was also a poor man. As a child, he was given twisted values by his father. His father demanded that he must enter the magic bureau to prove himself. Otherwise, he had no value in his father's eyes. Though he had always struggled to become a person of value, he learned this strongest magic through two and a half years of practice. He didn't expect this to be shattered so easily by blue hair. Oldest instantly felt that he had no value in existence. And Lance returned the book that Old Three had just dropped to him. Though he was not used to Old Three's words and actions. From this reference book that he had turned over Lance also saw how hard Lao San had worked to become stronger. On the other hand, because the male lead's aura was just too powerful, he had to draw Rain's attention. So, in order to figure out the source of the oppressive feeling, Rain then decided to test the male lead's magic power with a spider. Unexpectedly facing Rain's attack, the male lead was able to block it with only two fingers. This also made Rain very puzzled. After all, the male lead didn't use magic at all. The spider on the side was even more frightened. The result of its test was that the male lead didn't have any magic at all. That was simply impossible. Seeing that the spider was unable to measure the male lead's magic power, Rain planned to use three of his strength out. This time, even the spider felt worried for the male lead. The next second, the thing that shocked its eyes happened. Main character actually folded his sword into a chair and sat down to rest. The hero actually managed to block Rain's attack without using magic. This made Rain feel very curious in his heart. The male lead was a bit angry about it. Rain didn't care so much, he still decided to try again. This time, the male lead still easily blocked his attack. To find out the identity of the male lead, Rain asked for his name. After learning the male lead's name, Rain also remembered the dean's advice. Dean had told him that there was a very interesting person coming to the school. He had also specifically told Rain to help the male lead more. After learning about today's situation, Rain apologized to the male lead. The male lead doesn't give a damn after hearing this. The man is not happy about it, he has no choice but to take out his handkerchief, which he has been holding for two, five years. He wants to give it to the man. First thing that you need to do is to get your hands on a handkerchief that can heal your wounds. However, the hero didn't realize that Rain would actually like this kind of thing. Since the male lead was going to challenge the boss of Seven Devil's Teeth, Rain also reminded him to be more careful. After all, the other party was one of the candidates for the Divine Lords this year. While the male lead was able to take his beginner's magic, that doesn't mean that the current him can defeat the opponent. But as the saying goes, the greater the risk, the higher the reward. As long as the male lead can defeat Abel, he will be able to obtain the opponent's gold coins. This way, he can naturally become a candidate for this year's Divine Lords as well. Rain said that since the male lead is going to become on the path to become a divine lord, and he will become a divine lord even if he dies, after that he was going to leave. The male lord said that he appreciated his advice. Rain just said that these were only because of himself. On the other side, Finn and Dot went head to head against the remaining two. Only the pace seems a bit off. Why is the other side just pussyfitting around? How can two straight men face each other? Dot the pervert said he just loved it. They are not the only ones who have been in love with Ramon's sister, so they have to bear the pain of rejecting the old five. Expectedly, the girl was rejected on the spot after the direct storm. The face of a blow from the old five dot clearly felt the gap between himself and the other side. However, old five started talking to herself again. She stated that she was born like a princess and all men have to like her. If the men she meets don't like her, then she kills them all. Two men, Finn and Dot, instantly thought that this girl was sick in the head. The old five started to ask them if they liked themselves. She had just finished asking them if they liked her, and then she started asking them again. Before Dottie could say no, old five's attack hit. Old Five said that it wouldn't hurt to kill anyone who didn't know how to cherish her, because that's what her father told her. Instead, Dottie tells her that her dad is definitely not mentally normal. Otherwise, how could he say such a thing? He made a fireball magic shot near Old Five. Originally, he wanted to take advantage of the smoke to try to take away the other's wand. He didn't expect that Old Five could see his plan. Acting Old Five once again sent Dot flying. After which, she taunts Dodger that he can't possibly defeat her. Furthermore, she tells him that the fourth of the other seven mother's teeth can petrify a specific person with his magic. That the condition to become a specific object is the person who opens the gate. If they can't be defeated within 30 minutes, the hero will turn into a stone statue and die. The old five making storm magic again, the powerful magic value made it impossible for Dot to escape. Pain in his body was literally on the verge of entering the bone marrow. Just when Dort's consciousness was about to dissipate, he suddenly remembered something from his childhood. He was often tricked by other children into swapping out his newly purchased broom. In the end, it was his sister who got it back for him and talked about how none of these people were his friends. One day he meets a friend who is angry for him from the bottom of his heart. He vowed to die without betraying him. It was the hero who stood up for him when he was first mocked by the white hairs and women. The male lead also taught Dot a lesson to all the bullies. Thinking about all this Dot decided to help the male lead no matter what. As this old five was about to clean up Finn Dot suddenly broke through old five's confinement. This moment Dot's body exploded with amazing energy. Everyone froze. Looking at the mark on Dot's head old five was even more horrified. It was the mark of a self-disciplinarian explode with amazing power as long as their emotions reach a certain value. Sure enough, in the next second, Dort maneuvered the fireball and smashed it over. Old Five thought she was dead, but when she opened her eyes, she realized she was still alive and well. 
was still not able to do anything to the woman. Old Five instantly moved to tears. Just then a monster suddenly attacked from behind. Though Dot saved them in time he was also seriously injured. The man who came was the oldest of the seven mother's teeth. Chided Old Five for being in such a sorry state when faced with two people of one mark. Old Five had to apologize to him. Four, however, was unimpressed. Stated that he didn't even need to show up to deal with such a guy. After that he made multiple ten-man giant hands and attacked Dot and Finn. Dot realized that he was already fighting at a powerless level. To mention the fact that the other party was a genius who had joined the Seven Mother's Teeth in the first year. However, just then a sword shot out. Oldest who was lying on the ground had a look of disbelief on his face. What was it that shattered his magic with just one blow? He saw the person who came it was unbelievable. Dot and Finn were also very surprised could this be the strength of a divine lord. Old Five's attitude changed very quickly. He instantly stated that she wouldn't attack them. As soon as the words left her mouth the cunning old four launched a sneak attack. It's completely angered Rain. Going to teach him a lesson. After the smoke cleared Lao Si realized that he was no match at all. He hastened to slyly argue to Rain that he was also threatened by able to be like this. Rain didn't pay any attention. He directly raised his foot and kicked it. Oldest five saw that the oldest four were about to be trampled to death and decisively prepared to slip away. Just as Dot was still wondering why the Divine Lords appeared here Finn's words stunned him. It's actually Finn's brother. On the other hand the hero finally arrived at the base camp of the Seven Mothers Teeth. In the face of a swarm of mannequins from God Duke Candidate Abel he directly threw an iron ball over. Next second the mannequins were knocked down like bowling balls. The hero asked where Ramon was. Expectedly Abel not only didn't say anything but also summoned three even bigger mannequins. Even with the attack of the three dolls it was just a punch to the male lead. Recognized the strength of the male lead but only just. In the next second the male lead's fist actually swung at himself uncontrollably. Only to see his limbs were completely pulled by the lines. Will just swung his hand and the male lead's hands choked himself uncontrollably. In the next second the lines disconnected. Turns out that Abel thought it was too boring to defeat the hero this way. He summoned Finn who had turned into a doll. Said that the male lead can't make a move yet. As the hero strikes then Finn will immediately be pulled apart by his silk threads. Male lead was then punched for a full two and a half minutes in such a situation. To Abel's surprise, the weapon actually broke first. The hero was still fine. At this point, the hero pulled out gold coins from his pocket. Flicked it with force, and the flying gold coin instantly snapped the strings controlling the mannequin. The thin threat broken Finn immediately changed back to his original form. Outrageously, the gold coins flew back to the hero's hand. At the same time, he didn't forget to taunt his opponent. Will heard this and immediately released a big move. He said already he has no patience to play with them. To see the hero's limbs are all trapped by silk threads. Abel thought he had already won. He didn't expect that the hero could actually break free from his control. Abel didn't mess around. He directly made the doll switch. Anne's hands immediately began to puppetize. Soon his entire body turned into the form of a puppet. Abel's eyes he was just a loquacious rabbit. He reached out for the hero's gold coins. He didn't realize that the thing he took out was actually a puff. What's wrong with you what are you doing with his puffs? At this point Abel still do not understand obviously turned into a puppet of the male lead why can still fight back. Knowing that the principle of puppetization is to cut off the signals sent from the brain. As he concedes the brain's control over the body. Definition without his control the male lead could not have moved at all. Our male lead is inherently irrational. Behavior relies solely on spinal cord reactions. Human hands will subconsciously retract when touching something hot. For example when you tap your knee your foot springs up uncontrollably. Flex arcs like these that respond to external threats without going through the brain also exist in the human body. All magic only turns the outer shell of a person into a doll. His inner self remains a human body. That is to say, Puff is the life of the hero. O was also stunned. He didn't expect the male lead to be so strange. At the same time it proved the strength of the male lead. In order to settle the fight he extracted a large amount of magic power from the doll. He was ready to unleash his strongest second order magic against the male lead. O understood that even a lion fighting a rabbit needed to use all its strength. Next second countless threads fell towards the male lead and the mannequin launched an attack at the same time. Puppetry can turn everyone within a 100 meter radius into a puppet. The moment the silk threads touch the body the puppetization will start to activate. Will lays down the gauntlet. Will wantonly play with the hero's body which has been turned into a doll until he can no longer recover. The silk threads attack the hero. The hero's behavior of constantly dodging gave Abel enough courage to be arrogant. However in the next second he was surprised to the point of being dumbfounded. The mannequin he was so proud of became shattered couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe that the hero could actually avoid dolling up. Even though he heard the male lead say that he cut off all the silk threads he still couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe that the hero could actually see those hanging threads. Because that couldn't possibly be something a human could fight against. Old Five saw the whole process. Male lead had tilted his body incredibly after Abel used his magic. It turned out that he had deliberately tilted his body in order to delay the contact with the silk thread. The moment when the left side of his body touched the silk thread and the right side of his body had not yet lost its freedom. Cut off all the silk threads. Wild and sharp strategy. This moment Abel was completely flustered. 
attacked the male lead with all his might but he was still easily taken care of by his opponent. The moment he was defeated he recalled his mother. Being a noble she had a compassionate heart. However while she was distributing food to the refugees someone got the idea of taking it all for themselves. Resisting her mother was stabbed to death by the man. However the man also taunted the woman's kindness as naivety. After that Abel changed his mind about the world. He kept searching for talents like Nanamoya. He borrowed power that he shouldn't have. His purpose was to wipe out the weak at the bottom and change the new world. Hero wasn't interested in that. He just asks where Ramon is. Abel freed his magic and Ramon appeared in the air. Looking up Finn saw the hero and the others and everyone was happy about the battle. At this moment Finn suddenly thought about where Lance had gone. On the other hand Rain the Divine Lord realized that the Lance in front of him was different. He wondered how he was exposed. Finn said that the people who are not right he will test them first. Next second Lance actually turned yellow. Finn was curious as to why Pure Roots had entered the school. Lohair says that they went into the school looking for something very important. And Abel, one of the seven mothers, is one of them. Of course, important information that he certainly wouldn't say to Rain. Just that he's going to go and take care of Abel right now. Seeing his opponent trying to slip away, Rain immediately rushed up. He was blocked by a sudden large dinner knife. One who came was John the Killer and Gourmet of Pure Roots. On the other side of the room, the heroes were still celebrating the defeat of the seven devil's teeth. Abel, who was standing behind them, looked at them helplessly. An old five who had been watching the battle at the door for one hundred years felt helpless. However, fortunately, the male lead paused in time, saying that he needed to address his physical needs. Watching the male lead leave, Finn and the others lamented that things had finally come to an end. Students who had been turned into mannequins had all regained their appearance. They felt that the school was very competitive, it would keep them moving forward with passion. At that moment, pure root suddenly came to them. With just a wave of the man's hand, the three were instantly sent flying. Pure root ignored the three, aimed directly in front of Abel. I didn't expect that Abel wouldn't be able to become the strongest in the school even if he borrowed his power. In that case those who hadn't completed their mission had no right to live. Next second Abel's hands uncontrollably strangled his neck. Since he's about to get rid of Abel the hero shows up at the door with a plate of puffs. Rio tells the hero that now is not the time to celebrate. Fly flies inappropriately on the hero's nose. Three of them look at each other with wide eyes. Fly breaks the awkwardness. Hero apologized for this but could he have his puffs back? Roots was speechless. He wanted to teach the other guy a lesson. And a sudden pain shot through his head. Because the male lead walked and that he resonated. The person they were looking for at the school the male lead. Before that he still had to try to solve Abel. On a of absolute power Abel couldn't move at all. He pulled out his wand and attacked. Abel didn't expect that it was actually the masked man who blocked the blow for him. Hero looked at the injured masked man and took out the healing handkerchief that Rain had given him. Facing a guy who hurt his friend the hero usually used his fist to return the favor to the other guy. He just stomped his foot lightly and the ground started to collapse. At the hero kicked a rock out. The little ones were surprised. Believably yellow hair caught it with his hand. Even more unbelievable is that he actually started licking the rock. What kind of hobby is it to lick rocks? Oh, even the hero was incredulous. I don't know what kind of special fetish he has, he's still going to get a beating. Face of the male leads threat pure roots didn't take it seriously at all. He waved his wand and sent out a storm of attacks. The male lead was fast, he took damage. And taunted the male lead that his strength was nothing more than that. He cast a heavyweight magic attack who was behind the hero was well aware of the gap between himself and this man. The thing about him including his birth looks and talent was just a little bit better luck than others. He knew that there was no way they could win against each other now. The man didn't recognize what he was saying. He said that one can feel quite lonely if one is alone all the time. You know you are wanted you feel happy. The hero said that he would definitely save them. Your roots then increased their magic power to attack the hero. Looking at the male lead who was desperately trying to protect them the masked man also finally made a request for the first time. Old Abel. Abel who recognized his existence after his parents abandoned him as a child. Though that was he didn't know what it felt like to be needed. He asked Abel to help the hero. Ending on the sidelines that wanted to go up and help. Once he leaves Finn and the others will have no one to protect them. The hero is strong the melee mages can't get close enough to utilize their full strength. Roots once again increased its magic power. The lead could only stand still and keep blocking the attacks. When Dot felt powerless pure Roots didn't expect Abel to actually strike. But waiting for the man to think Abel maneuvered the dolls to attack. In front of him, these levels of magic were not effective at all. Anakin's were already in pieces after the attack. Since he was still taunting Abel, the male lead actually walked out in the head of the mannequin. And didn't expect the male lead to be so shameless, he actually engaged in a sneak attack. He was curious what the hero's magical ability was. And casually said power magic. He felt that the male lead was teasing him as if he were a fool. But he took out a demon shining mirror. Her dot recognized the mirror. The magic mirror that could be fully countered. The stronger the opponent's magic attack, the more powerful the counterattack. This is a prop that all magicians fear. Because of this, it is usually guarded by the magic bureau. Now, why did the mirror appear in his hand? He couldn't help but want to remind the hero to pay attention to it. 
didn't realize that this thing didn't have any effect on the male lead at all. The male lead kicked the mirror directly and shattered it. The boys were all stunned. Only then that they remembered that the hero really never seemed to use magic. Always relied on his strength to fight. All in disbelief. A moment a strange mark suddenly appeared on the man's injury. A moment he was finally sure that the man was the one they were looking for. A second a strange space suddenly appeared behind the man. A bunch of tentacles wearing gold rings picked the man up. Before he left he introduced himself to the man and said they would meet again afterward. One was relieved to see the man finally leave. Also escaped with this. Walked over to the hero he sincerely thanked him. Promised that he would find a chance to repay the male lead. After everyone had left did the remaining three start to ask the hero about the magic. Despite the hero's efforts to defend himself they seemed to have decided that the hero didn't know about magic. They even said to themselves that they would help the hero keep his secret. Just then a neglected yellow hair overheard the conversation. Despite the fact that the male lead had just saved him he still screamed that he was going to turn the male lead in. It's the hero when his inability to do magic is revealed. Seems that the story about the male lead is not over yet. Look forward to the arrival of the next season.